like you're bringing sand to the beach. We well, family, welcome back to Password Kings. I know it's been a while. Um, today I'm back in Montego Bay and I'm with my buddies and we are going to explore this hotel called the Rio Montego Bay and I want y'all to check it out. Engage. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. My name is Rock Land. I'm a travel advisor. Passport King shows you samples of travel destinations so you can make an informed decision when picking your next vacation. I believe it's well known that because of the rainy season in Jamaica, that the best time of the year to go to Jamaica is between December and April. But most of my friends was off and it was the 4th of July weekend. So my buddies and I sporadically planned a little Jamaica trip. Plus one of my best friends from the Bronx, Bruce, who passed away, his birthday is also on July 3rd. So we planned a little celebration in his honor and made sure that we had a great trip. When we got there, the party was in full swing. Apparently nobody else cares about the rainy season either. So first you might wanna know about the Montego Bay COVID restrictions going to Jamaica. When it comes to COVID restrictions, getting to Montego Bay is very easy and straightforward. First call your local CVS or any drugstore and tell them that you wanna get tested for COVID. Make sure you set a date for about three days before the trip. We got a drive through and we were able to give ourselves swab tests in a CVS window. It was quick and easy. Next, you need to go to the Jamaica website and fill out your information. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. But you'll need to know where in Jamaica you're staying because that question is on the questionnaire. When you try to check in for your flight, the airline app will stop you in the process and tell you that you have to finish the rest at the airport. This is because they want to review your COVID results, make sure you filled out the website questionnaire, and double check your passport. But that's it. Everything else is the typical customs process that you would have had to go through anytime you visit any country. As far as getting another required test on your way back home from Jamaica, it's also an easy and pain-free process that the hotel would set up for you, free of charge. You'll have to visit the clinic in the resort two days before your flight home. Oh, and lastly, of course, you'll have to wear your mask whenever you have close interactions with any workers at the resort and on the plane. So now that that's over, let's talk about my experience. As soon as you come out the airport, everyone will be asking you if you want a cab or weed. Weed never gave me the pleasure that it does for some people, so I only accepted the cab offer. For people who do smoke weed, you'll be offered a lot of it during your stay. It seems like weed is almost like water in Montego Bay, Jamaica. I actually had a few people that just offered me weed for free. I've been told that it's not the most potent type of weed today because so many dealers in the US have added chemicals to get you higher. I'm under the impression that Jamaica weed is more natural, but a lot weaker than what you're probably used to. Anyway, the cab to the resort is about 20 to 30 bucks. You may be able to talk a driver down to about 15 bucks, but when you realize how nice he is, you tip him and probably pay him more than what he originally asked for. It's a really short trip to Rio Montego Bay from the airport, and it probably should cost less. But hey, after a two to three hour plane ride, you'll just want to get to your room and start enjoying your stay in Jamaica. The all-inclusive packages that I sell usually include transfer services to and from the airport. Then other than excursions and gift shop items, everything else is included in the price of the resort. Right now, rooms are about $250 per night depending on which days you stay. At www.passportkings.com, you can get some of the lowest prices on airfare as well. So is Rio Montego Bay worth it? The short answer is yes, definitely. The longer answer is Rio Montego Bay is adults only. Everyone loves their kids, but no one is interested in seeing them in a resort setting. At least I'm not. Have you ever gone to a resort and cheap bartenders were acting like the cost of liquor is coming out of their own pocket? Well, that doesn't happen here. They give you what you ask for. And if you request a strong drink, they understand exactly what you mean and they'll hook you up. Since what you'll be doing a lot on a resort is eating, the food can make or break a resort experience. Some dishes are whack, but about 95% of them are excellent and the selections are incredible. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served by some of the nicest Jamaicans you'll ever meet. Your choices are the buffets, which we usually went to, or the three other restaurants that have waiter service. Because of COVID at the buffet, there are people standing in front of each selection to place food on your plate. I wasn't used to that in buffet settings, but then I thought back to what I said about the buffets in Mexico and I decided that I like this way better. It's safer to not have everyone from every walk of life digging in the dishes before it's your turn. 
I think this is a practice that all resorts and cruises should adopt and keep even after the pandemic. Make sure you watch to the end of this video so you can download my free ebook about how to make money in the travel industry. And if you haven't yet, hit subscribe and press the notification bell. Now, as far as entertainment, like I said, Montego Bay, Rio is lit. The resort is so filled with activities you may not even want to do excursions. Our excuse for not horseback riding and windsurfing was there was a tornado warning for the time that we were there. But other than the heavy rain on one of the nights that cleared up just as fast as it came, the weather was perfect. The daytime pools was lit too. Maybe it was because it was a holiday weekend or maybe it was just because people were happy to finally get outside of the house, but everybody participated in the games that the DJs was playing around the pool. And there were swim up bars with bartenders who were just as generous with the drinks as everyone else was in this resort. And even while the restaurants were preparing for dinner, a small bar by the sand kept the food flowing, serving whole half of jerk chickens, rice and peas, and many other Jamaican dishes. Chances are you'll be full already, but to have that available is dope. We all know how hungry being in a pool can make us. There's even an amusement park sized water ride called Splashdown on the other side of the building. Daytime at this resort is great, but at night the entertainment doesn't stop either. Each night was a live stage performance, but that was following rounds of Name That Tune and other games that the resort came up with that everybody was participating in. Performances included a Michael Jackson rendition that was almost like being at a real concert of the late great Michael Jackson. I mean, this guy danced his ass off. Other nights they had the history of Jamaican music and numerous other shows that would rival Broadway or Coachella. Whoever's putting these shows together are experts. And then as soon as the performances are over, the DJ comes on and plays a mix of reggae, up-to-date hip-hop, and classics that everyone loves. By then, everyone is turned up. And with one recognizable note from any popular song, the chicks will pop up out of their chairs and start dancing as if they witnessed the second coming of Christ. It's better than the club in the US because the vibes are all good and you can tell that everyone has their inhibitions low. Talk to the girls and they're eagerly engaged in the conversation and none of the dudes there are trying to win the toughest thug contest. The Ryu Montego Bay Adults Only All Inclusive was my third resort experience in Jamaica. And it's truly changed my mind about where the most fun filled resorts is in Jamaica. I was told by people who recently stayed at Ryu Reggae that this was a better looking resort and an all around better experience. I'm thinking it's probably better than Ryu Palace because everyone was completely into having a good time. Sometimes when you pay more for resorts, a lot of people are a little too stuck up to just mingle with everybody else. To save even more money, go outside of the front gate and across the street for the ATM, to the gas station trinkets, and lower priced gifts.